Hello everybody, this is Austin from Craft Crickets in Eugene, Oregon. Welcome to our video series on cooking with crickets. Today we're going to simply grind some crickets into a cricket flour. So a lot of people when they cook with crickets, they already have cricket flour, they bought it that way. But sometimes you don't buy cricket flour, you like to buy whole crickets, uh, such as a bag of Kraft Crickets here. Now the advantage of buying whole crickets is that you have a little more versatility. You can use the whole crickets in your cooking, uh, whether you just want to throw it on top of a salad or on top of your yogurt to add a nice crunch, or you can grind it yourself and have the cricket flour. Uh, so today we're going to take some of the whole dried crickets that uh, we grew ourselves and we're going to quickly convert that into a cricket flour. You'll see it really doesn't require much special equi equipment or time at all. So all I have today is a, a simple food processor here. Uh, this also works in a blender, a coffee grinder, uh, or if you have a fancy mill, that's the best yet. Uh, when you buy something off the shelf that's already a cricket flour, you can be sure that was used or was made using a nice mill, which can ensure a very fine, consistent product. But today, um, we're just going to grind it in a simple food processor that uh, we've bought for about $30 or so off the shelf at a local retailer. Now, uh, with this, I'm going to take some of these whole dry crickets. Now, these crickets, we grew and processed ourselves, and when they're dry, um, I've baked them ahead of time. So before I package these, uh, I process them by baking them at around 200 degrees for three to four hours, or however long it took for most of the water content to be evaporated out of those crickets. So it takes, uh, we reduced the weight by around 72% to get a product like this. But that might be a little more technical than you need to know today. So I'm going to start by just making a half a cup of cricket flour. Now, or a quarter of a cup of cricket flour. And I do that by taking a half a cup of full crickets. So I'll be taking my full crickets. And this looks to be around half a cup. You can see. And um, I'm making these because today... Oh, I have the, the moisture absorber. Today I plan on making some pumpkin bread and some blueberry muffins with cricket flour in it directly after um, I grind this flour. So uh, I want to get a flour that's going to be nice and coarse, just like a typical flour that I would cook with. Now the cricket flour is very protein rich, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have all the properties of the typical um, all-purpose flour that you get at a store. So you cannot do a one-for-one -one flour replacement. Uh, I would recommend anywhere from 10 to 25% flour replacement. Uh, and with that, you're really just adding uh, a bunch of protein to it. Now, uh, I have my half a cup of crickets here. And I'm going to grind this for around 10 seconds. Now, it's going to get a little loud, so you might want to turn down the volume in a second. So I don't know how long that was, maybe that was 10 seconds. Uh, but if you can see here, we have uh, grinded it into a fairly coarse flour. Uh, there are still some evidence of some cricket legs and some cricket antenna. And uh, that is absolutely fine. If you want to cook with something with a little bit of coarseness, this is an absolutely fine state to have your cricket flour. When we make our cricket burgers, or when we make our cricket potato latkes, we like to have uh, a little bit of that texture that the cricket flour at this state leaves. And so I would quick grind it at this point and use that in my recipes for my cricket burgers. However, uh, because I'm making bread out of this, um, I don't necessarily want to have people having a little crunch in their bread. So I'm going to grind this up a little bit more and try to make this fairly fine. So it's going to get loud again. Okay, now it looks like most of the legs have been uh, reduced down into a powder. There may still be a few. Um, this is the advantage of using a proper mill or buying it um, already fully milled. Um, you won't have any legs. I'm not going to further run it in here anymore, but in another 10 seconds this would get very fine and uh, we'd have a really great power to work with uh, in our cooking. But, 
just to make sure that we do have a quarter of a cup of crickets. So it looks like I still have a few full crickets in there. Uh, I'm going to pour it into uh, my measuring dish. And yet, sure enough, uh, I did super precisely measure, but we're at around a quarter of a cup. So if you have a half a cup of whole crickets and you grind it to uh, a pretty fine powder, you'll get down to a quarter of a cup of crickets. Now with this, uh, again, I would not use this as a 100% flour replacement in your cooking. Instead, I would replace 10 to 20, 25%, depending on the recipe. Um, and by doing so though, you're gonna get some great protein. Um, this, these dry crickets are 60% pure protein. Um, so a lot of nutrition, a lot of energy for a relatively small amount of calories. Now, if you're looking for some more recipe ideas, either watch some future videos of this video series or check out our book, The Cricket Cookbook, which is available as a digital download on Amazon. Thank you.